Hello, hello, hello everyone, and it is Thursday night. We're running a little late this evening, so apologies from all of us here at Online Oval Racing. But you are here, it's Thursday night, and tonight we are going to be at Hennesford Hills for week number three of the Online Oval Racing National Hot Rod Competition. So you join me in our little virtual commentary box with some familiar voices you guys will recognize them all from last week i have sarah austin and dom brock in here with me guys say hello good evening one and all oh, i can see we've already got some comments flying in uh, youtube and facebook so thanks for your interaction already guys we'll get through as many comments as we can during the evening evening to you as well dom Evening, Sarah. Uh, good to be with you again. Looking forward to tonight. Hednesford, uh, one of my favourite tracks. Um, good close racing expected tonight. And uh, yeah, with the, some of the drivers and talent we saw last week, it's going to be exciting to see how they all get on. Definitely one that we've been looking forward to. There's also been a lot of new people who have um, joined up this week, which is going to be an interesting one. It's going to potentially throw a few curveballs into the mix now guys if you didn't realize we are broadcasting tonight we are live on our facebook page and we are also live on youtube so you guys who have your smart tellies and want to watch us in full glorious uh, 1080 resolution on your telly you can find us on youtube on both platforms just have a search for online oval racing and uh, you should be able to find us there now we're sticking to a similar format that we did last week. Sarah, I'll let you go on. I'll let you take everyone through uh, how we're going to run things. Thanks, Gab. So, yeah, just to remind everybody, if you've not, um, if you have been watching before on the previous two heats, or if you haven't, for those of you who are new, and we welcome you. So we have heats one to six, and um, then each driver gets two heats to compete. Um, and they are drawn as they were last week um, from their coloured groups as you'd no normally see on oval track racing. After the heat six we will have final B which will be the bottom 20 uh, competitors from 21 downwards and then final A will be the top 20 and also a golden ticket comes from the winner of final B. So uh, that should be an interesting one for final B to see who can win that race to get themselves uh, on the back of the grid for final A, which will be our, our finale for the evening. Do you want to take us through heat one, Dom? Do you want to take the white group and we'll, we'll read through some grids? Right. Sure thing. Um, let's just bring them up. So um, we've got a, a, a say, mostly fresh lineup um, on the white grade side of things. Uh, on pole position, we have uh, Ben Kennelly, 210. I'm going to apologise in advance for all pronunciations of the names here. Uh, we've got Keanu Sullivan, 136, alongside him. Then we have Adam Cochran, 434. Wilkes, treble one, comes after. And then rounding out the white grades is Nikki, 97. So for our yellows this evening, in front of the pack is uh, a man who's well known around the National Hot Rod Grid. Um, he these days helps out uh, Gavin, uh, Gavin Murray, uh, but was a former National Hot Rod in his, racer in his day. Mark Peck, Pecky 412. Lining up alongside him on the front of the yellows is Jordan Vovinkel. So we welcome our European competitors also. Crasher Chrome, who is not Mark, but the son of, so apologies Mark for last week's comment, Crasher Chrome 66 and AS Racing 32 round off your yellow group. After that, at the front of the blues, we have uh, J. Hammond 50, uh, and then beside him we have uh, one of the more experienced drivers on the grid, was out there last week, Willie Hardy, uh, behind him, uh, and the, the Next position, we've got Wayne Woolsey, 950, obviously a uh, very big heritage uh, and family name there. And next to him, we have uh, 152, Sean Taylor, taking up uh, the final position in the blue grades. So to uh, welcome our, our red racers for this heat one, a uh, racer has been in the last two, two rounds as well. So Jan Kielanski, 193. 
And then we welcome back Adam Maxwell. Unfortunately, he was due to be on the grid last week, but had uh, some some issues. So we'll, unfortunately, couldn't join in last week. But we welcome Adam Maxwell back, former world champion in real life. Uh, he'll be in 176 and in familiar colours to those of you who follow him on real life racing. Then rounding off the reds is Cami 143. And so to the final section, we've got uh, Superstock 144, which uh, I believe is Lewis Willisey. Um, he had a good run out last week. Um, after that, we've got Ricky Slater 102. Um, behind him, we have uh, the newly crowned. Well, he, he won the virtual virtual speed weekend earlier on uh, this week. So he's had some good racing uh, between the last league race. Uh, it's Derek Martin 20. All know him around here, and uh, rounding out the Heat One superstars is Sean Eleven. So that's our grids, and uh, I think the the guys are out on track at the moment, just uh, finishing off with some lining up. So uh, let's, uh, let's just jump over, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see what we can. Uh, we can see there. Sorry, I have to apologise as well. A few go, a few people may have noticed that we were having a uh, a few issues with the the grid scrolling through um, with uh, with um, and in fact we're having a few issues full stop this evening. We can go over to and watch the guys lining up, but it does look like we are having some issues with our timing board again which is uh, not ideal. OK, we're ready for a start, and off they go. The first race of the evening, Heat 1. So we okay, may... So we have a problem with some pictures, but we've got um, Ben Keneally, looks like he's in the lead. Um, with Adam Cochran in second place now. There we go, they're underway. Technical gremlins just to uh, keep us on our toes this evening. We get there in the end, we get there in the end. Exactly. Uh, the white grade's getting away fine. Not too not too difficult uh, tonight. I think the uh, there's no big drastic difficulties at Hendersford. There's the inside rumble strips but there's no static tyres like at Vauxhall where you could go absolutely flying. Um, hopefully this will be uh, oh. a good night for most of the drivers, a good clean night. No hill. Uh, well, there is, there is a slight um, incline up the centre of the track but hopefully we won't see any drivers there this evening. Side by side battle that we're looking at now. There's Johnny oh, Hammond in the 50 car there. Let's give you a little static view of what's oh, happening on this corner as Pecky's gone round. Yeah, Peggy's, Peggy's just well, been been told by the admins just to be careful as he rejoins. Obviously, the, the faster cars are coming through with Adam Cochran, our, our leader still. Poor Peggy, will he ever have some good luck in these races? He's uh, had some difficulties throughout his time and not really managed to get any solid points on the board over the last two rounds either. Another spin in the centre there around the home straight. I'm not sure who that was. That looked like Wayne Woolsey that was involved in that one. So, let's go back and uh, watch the pack here that's Yannick Kalansky in the 193 car and Lewis Willisey just outside of him Ricky Slater inside in the 102 Derek Martin tucked in behind that group as well a little bit of congestion for Derek Martin to deal with but that shouldn't be too difficult for him obviously having uh, really proven himself earlier on in the week he's now looking to do it again today so your leaders are now on lap 10 with your leader is still Adam Cochran he has got a almost a two second gap to Kean O'Sullivan who's in second. So I have to rely on you a little bit for the timings while we just uh, call what's happening with the racing as we uh, are still with this group that we see here. Yannick Kalansky, Lewis Willisey, Ricky Slater in behind him. That looks like Tommy Crone that the guys are going past and Sean Jacklin in the yellow and blue 11 car. He's come right from yeah. the back, so he's done a good start there. Um, he's obviously up with the red graded driver. And so that's got a, spin ahead. a bit of chaos. carnage there. That's Pecky involved in that again. Difficult to 
say who else got caught up there. So there see if we can catch that. Centre. That's Pecky on the infield. That's Wayne Walls in the 950 car. And he already had his pin earlier in the race, so he's he's well, he's pretty much out of the points at this time. At this time. And that's uh, Tommy Chrome in the 566 car. Hasn't affected this battle too much, which is good. Of course, the good thing about Hednesford is there's plenty of runoff on the infield, so if anyone does get into trouble, uh, there is plenty of runoff area. It's a nice wide track. So we should have plenty of places for passing. That's one of the uh, the newer oh, cars that was getting up on the rumble strips there and going around the wrong way. Some of the white graders learning the hard way that you don't get in the way of some of the the star graders and the red graders today just see ricky slater in fourth place there he's done really well to come through from the super stock guy from the superstar guy sorry just reading super stock um <laughs> from the back there ricky slater's style behind him is just looking at the grid there. so that's uh, got to be okay, uh, and that's a finish that is a finish i was about to say is that um that's got to be the final result there so uh we should be able to bring you some results oh it'd help if i uh, didn't send the camera flying off in all sorts of different directions well at least we know where the first aid box is <laughs> i've actually been in there to um go and retrieve my husband or he wasn't my husband in those days who'd knocked himself out in between turns three and four in his legend i think it was I was going to say, is this is this going to be a story that he's uh, he's particularly going to want us to tell? Well, no. He um, he claimed when the marshals went to him that he he hadn't knocked himself out, and he was in fact just checking if his shoelace was still done up um, on his <laughs> racing racing boots um, because his head was, uh, I think, looking at his navel. It's never a particularly good situation to uh, to find yourself in. So. so I've got. I don't know what the uh, whether that the final leaderboard was official there, but from what I could tell, Adam Cochran four three four was the winner of that race. He had a three second gap to Keanu Sullivan, and then Cameron one four three rounding out the top three. Ricky Slater got up to fourth, and Yannick Kalansky was fifth. Again, I'm not sure if that's official. Or I have then got third, Lewis Willacy behind him, uh, Sean Jacklin, and Johnny Hammond. Uh, Derek Martin and then Chris Wilkes rounding out the top ten as I saw it, but that will uh, that will be one that we will definitely double check before we uh, before we confirm that one. I will actually be able to uh, to get some results up, which um, which we will run for everybody and we'll confirm what those results were before the uh, before the night is out. So with that being said probably not a bad time to uh to look at the the grid as it is for the uh for the next round if you guys are ready yeah we're ready also just uh, uh, a shout out for a heat two runner donovan voster so uh, a friend of his i'm going to apologize martin i'm just going to say martin because i don't think i'm going to be able to pronounce your surname so uh, just giving the heat out there so i'm going to take the whites this time as dom started last time Why um we've got fabian 450 will be the pole man jn r rod 332 will line up alongside him then second row will be james 284 in the back of our white group this time is Scotty78. So another few new names in that one, which is great to see some new guys getting involved with us. I'll leave it over for you, Dom, for, for the yellows. So at the head of the yellows, we've got uh, Chris Crane, 15. And uh, behind him, or beside him, sorry, is uh, Ronan O'Brien, 715. Uh, he's had a good run of things last week. John Kirk Kirkland, 844 is behind him and then rounding out the yellows is alan 959 so in your blue group the beginning of the blue group is craig Durren 84 uh donovan vorster who we've just given a shout out to 73 is um lining up alongside him then the second row of the blue group is johan 148 and charlie aylwood 46 will round off your blues over to you dom for the reds 
and from one Dom to another, because heading up the red grades is Dom Freeman. He has a few fans on Facebook I saw earlier. He's got some support behind him tonight. Uh, then we have BDR867. That's uh, Tommy Daly. Then uh, Josh King589. And then rounding out the reds, we have Smithy565. That is Dan Smith. So I've actually just had um, some information come through from the admins that unfortunately Smithy565 has just had some computer issues, so he won't be joining us. Um, he may try and get those sorted throughout the evening, but I'll, I'll keep you updated as and when. So unfortunately, he won't be rounding off for, for Heat 2, won't be starting out. But in the superstars, front of the superstars group, we have um, McFerrin910, who had a great run last week, some really, really good results. So it will be e easy to uh, to look him at him for the evening, see how well he gets on. Barber296, who's a, a formal rubber racer, he'll be alongside McFerrin in the superstar group. And then finishing off our heat is QE174. And Carl Waller Barrett is 162. So two regular hot rod races there on the back row will be eager to come through from the back. And they had some really good results the last couple of weeks. So we'll be looking forward to, to seeing that back group, group come through. Now we'll just leave the uh, the graphics for the grid running through for everyone at home just to uh, just to ponder over um, while the guys are starting to um, sort out their warm up and get on to the grid. We won't bore you with watching a load of cars pulling forward out of the pits to line up and bumping into each other. Sarah, we did this last week. It seemed to, to work out quite nicely. Who is your pick for this heat? I'm going to go for Mr. McFerrin, as I just said, just then when I was reading out the heats. He had some spectacular results last week, so he's got to be one to watch. I just hope I don't give him the commentator's curse. He did. He, I think he did catch a few people with that last week, the commentator's curse. Dom, how about you? Well, uh, McFerrin, I believe he won last week's final, so he's got to be one of the hottest prospects out there. Um, I would like to see Carl Waller Barrett doing well. He's... Uh, been there or thereabouts the last couple of weeks he's been getting from the superstars to around fifth i think uh this week is the week that he can go one better and sort of break into that top three maybe even a win his well, mum's just giving him a shout out on facebook so thanks sandra <laughs> for you good luck to carl i'm i'm gonna go with a relative unknown i'm gonna go with charlie alwood and uh see how Ooh. see how he goes he's uh He's not one that we would normally sort of expect to be uh, up there or thereabouts, but I've I've seen I've I've had a bit of a sneak peek and I've seen the uh, the Alwoods running in practice and they've been pretty quick, so I think they're definitely going to be uh, be someone that is worth watching. Yeah, that could be a good shout. They're a familiar name in in racing, not necessarily in in the hot rod scene, but they are a familiar name in racing. So it's it's lovely to have them with us as a family. Uh, and I know he's got some supporters on Facebook and uh, YouTube as well. Yes, it's been a quite surprising amount of uh, of people that I've seen on uh, well on both YouTube and Facebook who've been shouting out the drivers. It's nice to uh, nice to see what's happening there. So the guys are all out and they're lining up on the grid as we speak let's jump over and uh, and find out exactly what is happening and i should hopefully have let's let's have a look and see if this uh, timing screen is going to work for us this time it's looking good so far we've got everything crossed in suffolk <laughs> So we've got a few people already asking how they can get involved with online racing so um, just keep your eyes peeled we do share the details throughout the week um, when we get a moment when the, one of the races is finished we will give out the uh, the online overall racing website details which is how you register with an interest and um, the guys are also practicing all week long so even if there's not enough spaces for the races then you can still join in and, and get some practice in now, while the guys are lining up, um, you may notice along the bottom of your screen, you will have a live scrolling um, uh, overview of the championship as it sits at the moment. Now, this this is as of last week. 
So this isn't being updated live with the, the races this evening. However, this is how the championship sits at the moment. Um, so if you guys are interested in seeing how your favourite driver is faring overall, it's not a bad place to look. One name that popped up on there, which, uh, I mean, it didn't surprise me, but it's definitely going to be one that we'll be uh, looking out for this evening. Daniel Erdl. Um, in that 28 car um, a German competitor that we've got in with us what a blinding first event he had Dom I mean he was one of the people who really impressed me last week um, I think you know, he's got a uh, well if he can keep up the form that he had last week he'll be right up there and the, he'll soon get break into the top five maybe even the top three come the end of the season as you can see he's 10th position at the moment but you know, who knows what will happen by the end of the season. We've got plenty more rounds to go, and he was extremely fast last time out of Birmingham. 37 points in a single meeting. It's it's not bad going to uh, to, to break, as we said, you know, the, the top 10 compared to some of these guys who've been, uh, who've been racing from the get-go. Now. I think he'll be out in the next heat, so we'll have to look forward to seeing him. Now this is your this is yours and Sarah's pick we're watching right now. And we're away. On board with Noel McFerrin. Making up places already. A good clean start from the pack. Wallabarrett. Yeah, no incidents so far, all good start as you say, Don. Wallabarrett by so one of my other picks just making it safe and steady around the corner going side by side at the moment but he's made up a position on Jason Q Donovan Vorster Fair running in uh, in oh, he was running in fourth place he's now up to third Ronan O'Brien going very good he's in second and he is sticking very close uh, with the leaders so this is the second and this looks like a really close pursuit yes yeah, is Fabian 450 is uh one of our new guys that's uh, that's new in this week with Ronan O'Brien. He's going very well actually uh, around Hennesford. He he had mentioned that he enjoyed Hennesford as a track, but we've normally been seeing him. Uh, Space just slashed that, so uh, the admins are just saying for keeping their lines. You know, no no funny business. They want to keep this clean recent. Oh. Oh dear, that's not how we wanted the race for the lead to end. But Fabian Barr got taken round there by Ronan O'Brien. We'll have to see what the stewards say. That's Alan Christie that we're watching now in the 959 car, who takes a bit of a dive to the inside. As uh, Is that Kiwi? That yeah, looks like Kiwi that one. McFerrin yeah, uh, yeah, heading McFerrin past there. Oh, yeah, McFerrin. doing really well. Up to eight now. Noel McFerrin is all over the back of him, though. Watch the guys as they come Pack. streaming through this corner. Pack starting to space out a bit, but uh, Ronan O'Brien still under pressure, this time from Charlie Aylwood, who was your pick, Gav. Yeah. It looks as if he's going to uh, challenge for the lead now. Just spotted that one myself. That's a 0 0.3 gap. Oh, 0 0.2 now. So Aylwood is right on the back of Ronan OB. So let's. Uh, on the pressure. There's Donovan Vorster in third. He's uh, a little way back, but not horrendously far away from the action. No, McFerrin is now up to seventh place. So uh, from right at the back of the, the superstars, he's he's had a great go. So they're just starting lap 13 now. Let's watch from. Uh, on board Charlie Alwood chasing down Ronan O'Brien in that 7.15 car he's only got a couple of laps left to uh, to do it in I think it's the last one actually Gav but this is going to be a do or die move if he's going to take the win Wood looking to get a good exit but I don't think he's going to manage it and that is O'Brien taking the win there Charlie Alwood good fight for second Forster, third, was there to pick up the pieces but just didn't need to in the end. And McFerrin taking fourth uh, after that start from the back of the grid as well. So, 
our final results of uh, heat number two this evening. Ronan O'Brien in that 7.15 car. This is with a, uh, a very strong performance, actually. Very impressed um, with him there. Uh, taking first place, Charlie Alwood, who uh, was my pick. Not that I'm going to brag on that one at all. Um, in second place, moving right up the uh, right up the pack. Donovan Vorster in third. A bit of a, uh, a surprise one there. Then there was your guy's pick, Mr. Niall McFerrin. Um, I'm wondering possibly whether or not it's just because guys are quicker on this track or if he got caught up in traffic there that he uh, he got hung up a little bit. Josh King in fifth. Uh, Scotty, 78 in sixth. Huey was in seventh. Craig Durant, as we said, one of the few guys running a mini in this competition in the number 84 mini in eighth. Uh, Johnny McCoy in that uh, rather fetching liveried 148 car in ninth. And Michael Barber. Now, Michael Barber was one who... Um, who I must admit surprised me when um, when we start looking at the the championship standings so far Michael Barber is one of those guys who has always been there or thereabouts in the top 10 and consistently picking up points and uh, I can't remember where exactly it is that he's sitting in the uh, in the championship standings at the moment but he's definitely one to, to watch out for for just churning in consistent results time after time yeah, definitely. He's quite a young lad, so um, he's probably more familiar with a, a lot of our races to, to sitting online. I, I don't really know, but I'm, I'm just suggesting that maybe he's, he's younger than a lot of the guys out there, but maybe he's done a little more online racing than, than some of our others. But yeah, he's a, a young lad who, as I said before, used to race in Rebels. I believe he's now in, in Legend. Maybe somebody can put me right on that one. Noticing that quite a lot, actually, with uh, with some of the, the drivers that we have in, you might not know them from the national hot rods, but a lot of these drivers are actually racing in other disciplines um, that you can find sort of around the UK. Yeah, and isn't it lovely that, you know, this is online oval racing. This is what we're all about. Let's join together. We're all a big family. You know, in real life, we have the marshals that, that support we have the first aiders all volunteers as are a lot of other people working at the tracks and isn't it just nice that during these times we can all come together and just you know be together as a big family and basically have some fun together so here we are the confirmed top 10 for heat two now this is the uh, the guys online names that they're using but um i'll try and break that down for everyone on facebook and youtube so that you can work out who it is we're talking about in first place, Ronan O'Brien, Charlie Alwood in second, Donovan Vorster in third, Niall McFerrin in fourth, Josh King in fifth, Scotty uh, 78 in sixth, and Kiwi in seventh, Craig Durant, then Johnny McCoy in ninth, and Michael Barber in that 296 car rounds out your top ten for heat number two. So it's probably Over not... Over to you then. Dom, do you want to start Heat 3 grid for us with the whites? Sure thing. So, the third heat of the day. Fronting the grid, we have David Ryan 30. Uh, I think one of the new ones, I don't recognise the name myself. Then we have Stuart 931. From there, we have Potter 79. After that, we have Lucas 24. And then behind him... Uh, we've got the other Freeman racing, Dan Freeman, 606. And then last one in the white grade, it's quite a stacked white grade for this race, is Joe Rawlings, 593. So, moving to heat three for the yellows. We have Rapid Roy 36, another new name for this evening. And alongside him is Irishman Damien Mulvey, 51, um, who you should spot in the, the bright pink car um as is it, his real life colors then we have a gap behind rapid roy so in the the fourth position uh third position sorry on the yellows um but in the fourth position so rounding off yellows for this heat three is snoopy msng 846 peter mcknight i'll i'll just i'll drop that one in there uh, i think it's, it's either mcknight or mcwright it's a little bit easier than snoopy for you <laughs> Right, thank you for that, Gav. <laughs> <laughs> 
putting the children to bed means I kind of don't get a chance to do, do too much of the uh, the homework on, on the new guys, but, you know, we, we're getting to grips with, with some of the more regulars now. So I'll quickly go over the blues. Uh, we've got, at the front, we have Sean Cooney, 921. Then we have Forks, 362. And Loveland, 220. Luke Loveland will be joining us later for an interview as well. Wishing the best of luck tonight. Oh, have we lost Sarah? So, oh, no. no, it's all right. Sorry, I was just making notes. So, uh, we've got another Aylwood uh, leading the Reds for Heat 3. Jack Aylwood, 146. Then we have Austin Newell, 156, will be alongside him. And the guy you were talking about earlier, Daniel Erdl, the German in car 28, uh, will be on the second row of the Reds. And alongside him, our first outing of this evening for Mr. Gavin Murray, otherwise known as the Cannonball who is a, a regular in the National Hot Rod scene. Um, he's in a, a dark grey car, and I know his little girls, Imogen and Jessica and his wife Mel are watching. Very good friends of ours, um, so giving the girls a shout out this evening uh, up in North Suffolk. So, the superstar grades. Um, fronting the superstars, we've got one of the most consistent drivers, I believe, who has raced throughout the, the course of the event so far. Uh, Tim Close, Tim89 there. Um, after that, we have Aaron McGrath, uh, who's raced in courses prior to tonight, but he's uh, making a debut in a Tigra for this meeting. Uh, we'll have to see if that works out for him. Uh, behind him, we have Simon998, which is Simon Kennedy. And then at the back, we have Ryan Walsey940, another good performance from him last week. Let's see if he can make it into the A final uh, on merit this time. So coming in, guys, picks for Heat 3. Surprise me. I mean... Go on. Yeah, I was going to say, go on, Tom. I, I, I was in awe at his driving last week. I want to see Daniel Lerdl perform again in the Reds. Um, but, yeah, I, I'd be interested to see how a few of the others get on. There's a few new names up there. I'm, I'd be happy if they gave me a surprise as well. Why didn't I jump in first? I would just literally <laughs> put my asterisk against Daniel Erdl. Um, I'm going to sound like I'm copying again now, aren't I? Right, let's have a Woolsey. I've been a, a big fan of Woolsey's over the last few weeks. So let's have a Woolsey come through from the back. Come on, Ryan. Don't let me down, mate. I'm, I'm trying mean, to think because I'd, I'd managed to, to go for someone sort of different. But I think everyone, I mean... It's got to be Daniel Erdl. It's got to be one of the, the obvious choices. Do you know what? Let's go for someone different. I'm going to go for Tim Close in that 89 car. I'll go for Tim Close as, as my choice. He's, as uh, as Dom very rightly pointed out, he's been pretty damn consistent the uh, the whole time that we've we've seen him run in. So, yeah, we'll... Um, yeah. I'll go for Tim Close. We've got two Daniels getting shout-outs on Facebook. So, Daniel Freeman, as his mate, Michael, or it might even be a relation... <laughs> Is shouting and also Daniel Erdl has also had a shout out there from his mate Martin. So see the uh, the guys as they're all lining up here at the moment. It's definitely going to get confusing at some point. You can guarantee it with two D Freemans. Uh, yes, yep, definitely. On oh, two cars lining up looking completely the same there, <laughs> even worse. That's going to be the case that we're going to have with a lot of the uh, the new cars, unfortunately. So let's um let's watch the start. Let's watch it from. Our uh, our man that we're we're shouting out for for great things this evening. We're going to watch the start from on board with uh, with Daniel Erdl in that 28 car, and away they go. A little bit of a twitchy start. These hot rods are a bit difficult to get off the line. That's why they're usually rolling in real life. But a good clean start. No real big incident so far. They'd like to say they need to warm up their tyres, but obviously, as we know, you don't need to warm up your tyres in online racing. It's not like normal racing. So, Gavin Murray's doing all right. Ryan was um, was getting his nose into someone a little bit there, going through uh, turns three and four, but that seems to have all sorted itself out. little nudge there from... Uh, in fact, I'm not entirely sure who that was. There was a little nudge and someone uh, getting a little bit sideways going through the first corners. Like and that's Luke Loveland in the background. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, see if we can find out exactly what's happened to him. That doesn't Stuck look uh, particularly good for Luke there. 
Yeah, he's just been warned by the admins, obviously, to, to watch out as he rejoins. It's going to be a tight situation, but it's just about getting going. So we have a Freeman <laughs> in first place in this race. It's not Dom. It's I was just going to warn you about that, though, Gavin. Just looking at the gap, I think that might be a technical glitch again, because I think Dan is listing as a lap ahead. Um, Joe Rollins and David Ryan are pretty close, so I'm not sure whether that's a further issue. 11 a second gap, it circuit. could be. Yeah, I was just keeping an eye on that. I think it, it's more likely that Joe Rollins is, is our leader um, with a, a smaller gap to, to David Ryan in second and Potter 79 in third. Which would and Daniel put Erdl Daniel Erdl in fourth. Good performance from him again. Ryan Woolsey's making, uh, carving his way through the field as well. Uh, putting in a good performance there, but just not kept up with Erdl. Granted, there is a grades difference between them, but uh, superstars usually are expected to cut through to the front as the evening goes on. So if we're saying that we think Joe Rawlins is actually the guy in first place, then we're uh, riding on board with him now, looking uh, looking, looking back backwards. To the, <laughs> <laughs> to, to the no second place, he is far ahead if this is the lead. And I can't see... Which would make well, sense. It's five seconds going by the uh, going by the timings, and he's absolutely flying. Look, he's, he's back round there, catching up with uh, with Cannonball himself. Look. Yeah, Gav just uh, in the mix there. Fast stuff from Dan Freeman. Oh, sorry, from, from Rollings. My apologies. <laughs> Getting caught up myself there. So if we're assuming that he's a lap ahead, then we're going to say that this is going to be as they complete the final lap now for everyone else that's not Daniel Freeman. So, we, yeah, we have to assume that that is Rollins' victory in the 5.9.3 uh, well, car there. Uh, David Ryan taking second and Daniel Erdl up to third. What a performance from him making his way through. Porter, oh, sorry, Potter 79 uh, in fourth position as it should be we'll have to find out where Dan Freeman really lies but uh, well it's a bit, a bit difficult to say where, what the gaps would be Cannonball also making it into the top 10 good performance from him as well and uh, Mr Mulvey himself with uh, as Sarah very rightly pointed out a unmistakable bright pink car that he's got there he's definitely done well to get himself inside of the top 10 so we we'll just uh, go and we'll try and clarify exactly where the guys finished at the end of that race. We'll uh, we'll talk to the admins to uh, to find out exactly what happened there. So the admins are giving it that Daniel Freeman was our winner. So he must have just got that amazing lead from the off, which is what causes the confusion. We are going to have to eat humble pie now, definitely as. <laughs> As as he's been shouted out as well on uh, on Facebook, I think it was that you uh, you said, Sarah. That's that's definitely humble pie that we're going to have to eat. That that was a pretty impressive um, gap that he pulled out then, because I think at one point I was looking, I saw it was up to about eleven seconds. And now Joe Rollins is saying he is first. So uh, so okay, so guys, you're saying how can we not know who's in the lead? I myself am watching one, two, three, four, five, six, seven computer screens to, to bring you the action. I don't know about you guys where you are, but we're trying to keep in touch with what the racers are saying, what the admins are saying, um, the actual live timing, the YouTube streaming, the, fr the Facebook streaming, and our results and all our technical side of things. So, yeah, sometimes we do get a, a little confused, but... Joe Rollings is shouting, "I am a hundred percent the winner." It's not. It's not even so much that that causes uh, the issue. I, th I think we've brought it up when we've been streaming before, and uh, I know Dom will back me up on this one with uh, having some experience with R Factor himself. R Factor and a lot of the games that uh, that are out at the moment are really not designed with short track ovals in in mind, um, and especially when it comes to the different grades and everything that go with it. So the admin team behind the scenes, while uh, while we're chewing your ears off, are having to work exceptionally hard to get all of the drivers out on track and to separate them out into their individual grades. Now, 
the reason that then causes an issue is all it takes is one of the drivers to you know muck up his position and roll around the lap and unlike in real life where it's very easy to just say right we'll count from this point we have to rely on telemetry that we're getting from the game and the game will then put that person ahead of everyone else it's it's one of the the things that you just have to uh, unfortunately deal with when we're doing um stuff over tracks this short it's something that's a lot less of an issue if uh, if you're racing around i don't know silverstone or spa francorchamps for example and what yeah wouldn't you say dom i uh, was it's just yeah, uh, you're right. I mean, incidents like this are going to happen. There's going to be a little bit of confusion here and there. Um, you know, as I've mentioned before, this game's quite an old one now. It probably, <laughs> when the game designers were programming this, they, I don't think they had any idea that <laughs> in 2020 there'd be people still doing short oval racing on it. And yeah, it, the sort of basics of the game, they are not meant to sort of work in this way. Um, I mean, it's... Yeah, it, it can cause confusion, but there's not really much we can do about it. I think we just need to keep our wits about us and look at the standings where they are at the start and just check the gaps, because that way at least we can have a decent idea of what may occur. But other than that, it's yeah, we have to sort of play it by ear. So I'm going to put up, because it's, it's what's come through from the timing screens, this is the results as we had them from the timing, screen, uh, the timing screens which show Mr. Freeman there in the first place. Um, we will get it clarified by the admins before the end of the evening as to exactly who it was who took the victory for that. But we've got Freeman in first, Joe Roll in second, David Ryan in third, Lucas, um, who also has only started racing with us last week, um, doing very uh, very well for himself there in fourth. Potter 79 in fifth, Damian Mulvey in sixth, Ryan Wolsey in seventh, uh, Forks 46 in 8th, Mr Gavin Murray in 9th and Aaron McGrath rounding out the top 10. So, just look, I was going to say, sorry Gav, just looking at that, again, uh, I'm not sure if there was something that we missed, but Daniel Erdl not on that list, whereas he was relatively high in the closing stages. So, we'll, again, we'll still have to see once we find out this result, whether he is there, but... I, I can only assume something's happened to him and he's missed out on the top 10 this time. Must have been. For for him not to be showing, he was uh, he was absolutely flying. I think he was up to 4th uh, or 3rd when, we yeah, uh, when we were actually watching it. Yeah, and that's... Again, we'll have to straighten out the result and I'm sure um, you know on the website and so on we'll, we'll make it clear oh, on the Facebook page and so on. But um, yeah, a little bit of confusion this time. Uh, well, we, we think that Freeman has won, but we've got other people calling Hail Mary, so we won't <laughs> say anything concrete for now. Why not? I'm, I'm going to say that I won that heat. Let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's, let's just throw it into the mix. I'll, I'll throw my hat down as well. I, I think I may have won that one. So, uh, yeah, we'll just we'll, we'll see what happens. As I said, unfortunately, it comes, uh, it comes from the fact that this is a, uh, this is a, a bit of an old game that we're, uh, that we're doing this on, so... But let's move on from that, shall we? Let's let's start having a look at the guys for um, heat four. Move on from uh, from that result. So I'll I'll leave that one with you guys. Okay, thanks, Gav. So yeah, as Gav just mentioned, heat four, and we're beginning to see some of the names coming out again for a second run now. So on pole we have Fabian four fifty. Then we have J N R Rod three three two. And on the second row is your pole man from Heat 1, Ben Keneally 210. And another man from Heat 1 is Wilkes 111. And then rounding off your white group for Heat 4 is Nikki 97. Okay, so yellow grades. We've got at the front uh, Chris Crane 15. And then we have Ronan O'Brien 715. Crasher Chrome after him. And then AS Racing 32, uh, rounding out the yellows. Okay, and in the blue group we have another Woolsey. So Wayne Woolsey, 950. Sean 152, Sean Taylor, another regular National Hot Rod Racer. And Craig Durant, 84, who is a family member of the Scrutineers from the regular um, on National uh, Hot Rod Racing um, Championship. 
and then Donovan Borster will rise round off your blue group. Okay, so the reds, we've got uh, Cami143, uh, and again we've got the other Freeman, uh, Dom Freeman61 uh, in the middle, and then at the back of the red grades we have BDR867. So we have our world final champion of earlier on a few days ago, uh, Derek Martin20 is the front of the superstar group. Sean Jacklin 11 is running up alongside him. Then we have Nar McFerrin 910 and Michael Barber 296 uh, rounding off your grid for Heat 4. So, do you know what? I'm gonna. I'll. I'll let you guys battle it out now. It, it, there's a couple of names that you can choose this time. So hopefully, you know, we, you won't go for the same one, and we can look out for some different people. Sarah, you first this time, as you lost out last time. Well, I was thinking just as I was reading those out. Do I say no, I'm at Farron, or do I go for Derek Martin? I'm gonna go. Uh, I don't know how you do it in horse racing, but one of those two is gonna get first, and one of those two is gonna get second. So you're going either way, basically. Yeah, that's what we call it. Each way betting or something, isn't it? I'm yeah, not a, a horse fan. Dom. Dom? <laughs> Have we lost oh, Dom? Sorry. Oh, no, he's there. No, no, no. <laughs> sorry, that was my own fault there. I, I muted the mic just to have a sip of water, and then uh, <laughs> I started speaking all to myself. Ah, right. So, uh, Heat 4, um, my predictions... This is, well, there's such a talented lineup here. It could be any of the, the superstars. Um, but I, I'm going to say, I'm going to put a stab in the dark and go with Don Freeman. Um, he's he's been He was up there in the last race. He made some good gains. I think he could do it. Um, he's been driving around in that you know, really nice car, flames on the side, very retro. I think he can do it. He, he's, you know, it could be well I say it could be any one of the superstars but I would like to see Freeman do well this time I am going to go and this 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 is Gavin's hot pick for uh, for Heat 4 I'm going to go for Cami 143 because what I know that you guys may not have realised is uh, Mr. Cami 143 is a certain Lewis Willis's brother and uh, it's possibly uh, possibly just pinning a little bit too much on uh, on the family relationship there but I, I reckon he's probably going to be one to, to watch for this one so I'm going with Cami143 for my choice okay and the boys are off Heat 4 here we go get a nice clean start the wide track at Hendersford definitely paying the boys favours today making life a lot easier Yep, Keneally's got the whole shot, but Fabian 450 isn't far behind. 0 0.2 seconds. Ooh, Derek Martin getting there. a little bit sideways there. And Freeman making contact with the Armco as well. I hope I haven't given him the curse. Top 10 is pretty close, looking at the timings here. Chris Let Crane doing, doing nicely for himself. Yeah, just spotted that together. That's my little boy's hero, Chris Crane. Wayne Woolsey ends up to seventh there. He's got a little bit of a gap to the next car, but he's on, been on the move. Ronan O'Brien also. I was going to say, look who that is in fourth. That's Ronan uh, O'Brien, and he is having an absolute stormer today. Martin making his way up into the top ten, and well, he's now up to eight, and that's Sean Taylor in the centre. And There's Chris Crane. Oh, and Craney out from second. They can probably get me going, hopefully, from that. Meanwhile, at the front, Fabian Bauer is still leading the way. Ben Keenley has got a little bit of a gap to him now. And it's actually changed for second as well, as Cameron 143 takes up the second place position. Sean Taylor's okay. got himself back on track there. Yeah, Wayne, Wayne Woods is up to fourth now. Good spot, Sarah. And Derek Martin's actually gone through to fourth. There he there he goes, and as they come round the corner, trying to look for Derek Martin. There There's he is Derek the Martin with Noel car. McFerrin behind him. Those two going up together, and we've got a spin at the corner of the screen. I'm not sure who that is. That looks like Chris Wilkes, I think, in the 111 car, who was actually running quite nicely, and I think that's taken him well down out of the top 10 now. Such a shame for him. 
But top three now, Derek Martin has broken into that and McFerrin following him through as well. Wayne Woolsey has dropped down to fifth again, but he'd still be happy with that, I'm sure. You see Derek Martin making moves on uh, some of the back markers there. Abby and Bauer very close to the leader here. Cameron 143 right on his tail. Very difficult to work out what the gap would look like, but they're pretty much side by side for the timing screens. And, and Cameron 143 has made the move to the lead. Oh, we've got to change a leader. Cameron's up to first. So, I hate to say I told you so. <laughs> uh, yeah. I did just think that when I said it. Got two laps to go by the looks of things. Noel McFerrin there in fourth. Derek Martin in third. Contact with Sean Taylor at the back of shot there. He's not having much luck, I must admit, in uh, in transitioning over to the, uh, the online side of things. And that's a big pile-up that we've got going into the first corner there. Not sure if this is a post-flag pile-up but there appears to have been some chaos late in the race. McFerrin and Martin together, but I'm, again, I'm not sure if this is a post-race incident. Oh, so I'm, got I'm only just seeing the chequered flag out them. now. So I think that incident that we had was actually just before the final lap because the, the chequered flag came out as those guys crossed over the line that last time. So I think that may have been just before and it, it still hung over to when they actually crossed over the line to finish the race. I think you might be right there, Gav. Uh, Fabian 450 falling to fourth in the end of Wayne Wolsey holding fifth. So, so I didn't quite get my dream, but I did get uh, McFerrin in second and Martin in third. So I was almost right. <laughs> clinging, clinging on to any small victory that you can there, aren't you, Sarah? <laughs> Why the heck not? It's Thursday evening. <laughs> so, the results as we have them for Heat. Number four, Mr. Cameron Willisey in the 143 car, um, taking out your victory of Noel McFerrin behind him in second, Derek Martin in the third, Fabian 450 in fourth, Wayne Wolsey uh, making his way quite nicely up the pack there in fifth, BDR 867 in sixth, Sean Jacklin in the number 11 car in seventh, Tim Close in the 89 car in 8th. Dom Freeman in the uh, in the 61 NASCAR inspired car in 9th and Ben Keneally uh, rounding out your top 10. So I mean that's that's um it's not a huge surprise for for second and third and uh, I think Cameron is going to be another one who's going to be very similar to what we saw from uh, Mr. Erdl last week. I think um, I think we might see some of that from him. But some of the people who have been surprising me, Ronan O'Brien. I mean, he obviously got caught up in something, but Ronan O'Brien at one point was running quite happily in uh, in second place and seems to be doing quite well for himself. Yeah, I mean, we've still got uh, quite a few more rounds to go after this. So all these guys can do is just keep steadily building, like the guys like Michael Barber have been doing. Just getting the, the good results there, not necessarily the podiums, but the good results. It all keeps adding on to your total for the championship. Definitely. It's uh, it's not a sprint, this, uh, this series that we've uh, we've got on at the moment. It's going to be going over a... Uh, We'll be going over a few heats, and uh, although we've got a lot of names that um, that we may recognise at the moment who are, are sitting up at the top, we're definitely getting new people who are joining who are going to be uh, mixing it up with some of the more established names. That's uh, that's one thing that's definitely for sure. Yeah, definitely. One guy who uh, is should be running in this heat, but I haven't seen uh, Adam Maxwell. I don't know whether I've been completely daft and missed him completely in. Uh, earlier on in the heats, I think it was due. I can't see heat now. One. Yeah, heat one. Um, uh, I haven't seen his famous white and orange colours out there. Have I? Have I missed them completely? No, I can't say that it's been a car that I've particularly noticed. And Maxwell's normally running quite well when uh, when you watch him. He's normally at least in the uh, the top ten. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to double check and see. Uh, see exactly what's um what's happened there whether or not he is actually racing with us this evening and uh and we've missed him or whether or not uh 
whether or not he's actually not made it in. So the results as we have them from the last race. Cammy 143 in first. Niall McFerrin in that 9-10 car cementing yet more points for himself in second. As is Derek Martin in third. Fabian in the 450 car in fourth. Wayne Woolsey in fifth. BDR 867 in sixth. Sean Jacklin in seventh. Tim Close in the 89 in eighth. Dom Freeman in ninth. And Ben finally rounding out the top 10 for heat number four. So I will leave you guys to, uh, to take on the grid for heat five. So, so go um, on then, Dom, I'll let you take the whites. Sorry, I'm just going to see who's going first. Okay, so we have for heat five, at the front of the grid, we have uh, Lucas24. Then alongside in the second place position we have Dan Freeman, 606. In third we have Joe Rollins, 593. Again, still not sure about uh, his first heat, but he was up there and was very consistent when he was uh, when he was in charge of the race. Um, Kian O'Sullivan, 136, is there in fourth. And then rounding out the right, the, the white grade cars we have Adam Cochran, 434. So your yellow group, we seem to have a gap at the front of the yellows, but a Mr. Snoopy 846, I'm going to call him, or Peter McKnight, as he'll be better known to his friends, <laughs> um, will be the front front of the, the yellows. Then Pecky412, who, come on Mark, get a lap in, let's get round, he's about as good as I was trying this track on Sunday, uh, who will be uh, alongside Jordan Vovinkel 122. So, blue grades, we have uh, Forks362 at the front, alongside him we have Luke Loveland, uh, Loveland220, a little bit of misfortune in the first race getting caught in the wall, hopefully uh, he can have a bit of better luck next time out. Uh, then we've got Jay Hammond50, so that is Johnny Hammond, and then Willie Hardy972, also rounding out the blues. So our red group for this heat five, so this will be the, the penultimate uh, heat of the evening. It will be Mr. Daniel Erdl, the, the disappearing man from the earlier round. Daniel 28, Daniel Erdl. Then we have Cannibal 95, Mr. Gavin Murray, uh, followed by Jan Kielanski 193. And if he's there, Adam Maxima 176 should be the back of the road. So we'll just wait and see if he does actually manage to get in or not as i said we haven't spotted him earlier on we can just see him going through the the stream there on on your computers so superstars we have simon 998 that is simon kennedy alongside with him we have ryan Woolsey 940 uh we've got the championship leader lewis willisey he's going to have a, a difficult fight on his hands tonight defending that and then at the back of the grid we have ricky slater 102 so, well, we've we've done it every round so far. Picks for this round. I am going super stop 144. I know he's been a, a great helper to us on, on some of the behind the scenes stuff. I'm just going to throw my hat into that one. I, I think he might do well. Or my other one I'm looking up for is Johnny Hammond, who is from the, the Woolsey stock. Um and also a racing alongside family member, Ryan Woolsey. But yeah, Johnny Hammond and Superstock 144 are going to be my shouts for this one. Okay, I was going to say, I, I think Gav should go first based on how much, how much of a, a masterstroke <laughs> decision the last oh, time Oh, sorry, was. typical female jumps in there. No, no, I, I just wanted to see, but... And guys, uh, I'm just uh, going to jump in before we finish off the picks as the guys have got underway racing, so... Well, let's see how it goes from here. If it, front group. if it makes you feel any better, I was going to say, I was going to go with Daniel Freeman in the blue car that we're watching at the moment, but he seems to be sliding backwards down through the, uh, oh. the field. <laughs> Curse of the commentator as he turns more, and that's a big incident there. Gavin Murray getting involved. Willis, he's got caught up in it as well, and he's spun. That's Lewis Willisey now getting around the right way and getting going down the back straight. That's definitely going to throw a bit of a spanner in the uh, in the works of what we were all expecting for this race. Adam Cochran leading from Joe Rollings and then O'Sullivan in third. 
Let's have a quick look at elsewhere. Kalansky's made Come his on, way up. Pecky, still showing in the top ten. This boy oh, slipping back down. <laughs> Sorry, Mark, done it again. I know all your family's watching at home tonight, babe. And that looked like Luke Loveland, who was uh, pretty much parked on the exit of turn four there. More difficulty for him. Such a shame, given uh, his first heat as well. Ryan Wolsey now at the edge of the top ten. Pecky is still there. He's not dropped out completely. But Kalansky is the man on the move. Uh, he's up to seventh uh, from one of those. I think it was a red grade he was in. So and he's made great progress. Him who was just getting nudged sidewards there by Wooly Hardy, I think. As, they, uh, as we watch them now as they head down into turns one and two. Willie Hardy doesn't seem to be uh, doing too badly for himself around here at the moment. So uh, seventh no, place he's up to at the moment. Now. Certainly bumpers out on that last uh, lap. But Daniel Erdl, the one who is, again, very much silent assassin making his way up the field, dispatching each and every driver that comes to his, that comes to his way. And he's make, trying to make another move there. And, and oh, he's made contact with Vorster. We'll have to see what the stewards think of that. Oh, sliding round, and again, Vorster still stranded on the back straight. It's and that's Simon chaos. Kennedy that's spinning as well. Absolute carnage. And Erdl manages to sneak through. So we're riding. Made gains out of that, I'm not sure. On board with him now, and you can see, you can start to get an idea of exactly what these guys are seeing. They didn't have much time to react when you see some of the spinning cars in front of them. I'm still showing Daniel Erdl in fourth, with uh, Jordan Vovinkel in front of him in third, who I believe is South African. That's another tab round there that he has on uh, on Vorster. That's Vorster two coming together that those two have had. I mean, we have to give credit to the man out the front, Joe Rollings, because this looks like it might be, well, he's, this, hopefully this will be a certain win for him this time, because there's no doubt that he is leading, and he has done this so from the start. This is a great performance from him. There he is in that 593 car, as they come round. This should be checkers, if not, it's already down. And it is. But there he is. That's the Joe checkered Rollins flag there. Win. Keanu O'Sullivan second, Daniel Erdl in third this time, Jordan Voinkel in fourth, Adam Cochran fifth, Wooly Hardy managing sixth, Ryan Wolsey seventh, Kalansky down to eighth in the final standings. Bit of a disappointment for him considering the progress he was making. Slater ninth and Dan Freeman in tenth. Joe Rawlins giving us a few donuts in celebration there and uh, why on earth not? This is He's a, a happy man after the mix-up from earlier on, isn't he? Well, as we said, this is this is definitely at least one victory for him this evening, possibly two, as soon as we uh, we get the final information from the admins. Now, the the interesting one for me, I think, is going to be the um, the little bits of uh, coming together between uh, Daniel Erdl and uh, I think it was Vorster, wasn't it? They they had two comings together within the space of two laps. Yeah. Vorster and, and Erdl made contact. I think the other one that is really important and has dramatic ramifications on the championship is Willacy. Willacy only, with a one-point lead in the championship over Derek Martin. That, well, you've seen how Martin's been performing tonight. Willacy, we can't say the same for him, and most likely he's going to have a struggle on his hands to even maintain that tonight. Yeah, I think that may end up changing what the very top of the uh, the championship leaderboard looks like. It's pretty close, to be honest, across the uh, the top ten. I mean, between uh, Lewis in first place with 70-something points, Daniel Erdl in tenth place is 37. Um, you get someone who has a particularly good round, and it's not going to be all that difficult for, uh, for someone to make up some fairly significant ground and climb up through... Uh, and climb up through the positions in the uh, in the championship. Just want to give a, a shout out to our white white group of drivers there, our white grade drivers. The, they seem to have sort of the best results of the white whites for the whole evening, really. What what do you think to that, guys? Definitely. I mean, I think we've got some. Uh, I, I think we may have some sleepers within the uh, the white groups who are, are racing with us for the first time. But we've definitely got some guys with uh, with previous experience. I think either in R Factor or uh, racing uh, another national hot rod league 
Um, but yeah, definitely some some really good results from uh, from some of the new guys that we have in their first meeting. Um, yeah, it's going to be it's definitely going to be interesting to watch. They they're mixing it up with some of the names that we've uh, we've come to know and expect to be at the uh, the top of the leaderboard over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier on, even though obviously this is race night, official race night, the guys do get a chance to go and practice on the track for the whole of the week. So as from tomorrow, the fourth round of this championship, the track gets opened up and anybody who gets a chance, of course, obviously some are still working, some guys are still having to work at the moment, but for those that aren't and have some free time, they can go and basically be on here 24-7 if they wanted to for the next week just to, to get a run with some others and very often there's others on track as well so it's all good practice for them and, and I know this is where some of the new guys have come from is, is those that have been practicing during the week and they've managed to get themselves an early book in. Now we have I believe got some issues with the uh, graphic that we have for the grid for heat number six this evening so we're going to have to rely Sarah, on your on your dulcet tones, and and we'll we'll play between your dulcet tones, and then uh, and then Dom with his. Uh, I, th I think Dom's actually picked up the 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 names of everyone and and how they're doing standing wise very quickly. Guys, if if you hadn't realised, this is Dom's uh, this is only Dom's second week with us now. Um, coming and joining us and uh, joining us from the Speedworth TV team. Now, while the before we uh, jump in with the uh, the grids, how are you finding things on the virtual side, uh, Dom, compared to obviously going out and uh, visiting the tracks for real? He doesn't like it. I think he's having another drink, isn't he? <laughs> yes, well done. I've just done it again. <laughs> Oh, I, I, see, this is the thing. I'm not used to this still. Cause there's certain elements that I am not used to, and this is where I keep making mistakes. Um, yeah, technical side of things is, is probably my only bugbear. Um, I, I still, I'm not up to speed. This is my second time live streaming anything or joining a live stream. Um, I've done podcasting before, but there is, that's a bit more on the fly, a bit more go with the flow and make it up as, as you can whereas this was very much reliant on everything going to plan and all the screens working and all the stats working so yeah this is far more difficult um going to the actual meetings usually i'm never in such a privileged position to have all the data in front of me so it is is nice it's usually just sight and working out who's in the lead and paying attention to scoreboards when you're at the meeting uh, as much as you know we work with the camera teams and we hear the commentary it's not not every meeting um ipswich is one of the main examples we aren't in the the race control so we're not always knowing who's in the lead we're having to pay attention and keep our wits about us um you know as to who's up front they you know th th they there is a lot of comparison you can make between the virtual side of things um yeah, uh, it's just that some of the details that we have to our to our fingertips here are much greater than what I would normally have, and that does help sort of construct a better and clearer sort of view for the for the audiences. Um, we would like to do something like that for live stuff, but it's going to be a, a big step, um, you know, big step when we get back to racing. What 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 plans we've got in the pipeline and what we're going to do. Um, hopefully it will be sooner rather than later and you know we'll have full racing and full race meetings going on soon but we just have to wait and see um, in the meantime though I'm more than happy to do this and I'm, I think I'll still continue to do this even when we do go back normally racing because it has been very exciting and I'm definitely enjoying myself with this kind of thing I'll leave you guys to talk us through the grid um, for heat number five then this evening and uh, as the guys start to head out onto track to get lined up. Go on then Dom, do you want to start off with the whites for this final heat? Sure thing Sarah. Okay so at the front of the grid we have David Ryan 30 then alongside him in second place is Stuart 931 and uh, then in third place we have Potter 79 that is Darren Potter in fourth place we have James 284 
who I believe is James Bennett. And then rounding out the white graders, we have Scotty78, and that is Scott Kendall. So the front of our yellows is a Rapid Roy 36. Alongside him is Damien Mulvey 51 in the, the beautifully bright pink coloured car, easy spot. Then we have John Kirkland 844, who completely confused me in his last heat because for a second I thought that was Billy Bonner because he's in Billy Bonner's colours. So uh, lovely to see that out there. Um, Scottish racer, obviously for those of you more familiar with real life racing. And Alan 959 is the back of the, the yellow group for this last heat six. So at the front of the blues, we have Johan 148, which is Johnny McCoy uh, out in his Tigra again. Then we have the first of the Aylwood brothers. We've got Charlie Aylwood 46 uh, in the blue grades. And then rounding out, the, uh, rounding out the blues, the last position there is Sean Cooney 921. So, so we have Josh King 589 will be the, the first of our red group for uh, Heat 6. Uh, should have had Smithy 565, but we haven't heard that he's back in, so all we can presume is he won't be making the grid tonight. As we did mention earlier on, he's, he's got some PC issues this evening. Uh, second of the Aylwoods for this race is Jack Aylwood in the 146, and rounding off our reds is Austin Newell 156. Superstars, we've got uh, Jason Q at the front, Carl Waller Barrett alongside him, so that's an all actual driver front row for the superstars. Then we got Tim Close, Mr. Consistent, and alongside him, Aaron McGrath at the back of the grid. So I've I've been pretty good so far with guessing who's gonna be uh, who's gonna be making moves other than the last race where I managed to uh, to completely uh, completely jinx. So let's um Let's see who Dom. We'll, we'll let you go first with this one. Who's your uh, your pick for uh, a mover and shaker in heat number five? I'm going to go for a man who was a, a bit of a, a surprise last week because he was, you know, continuing on the consistency. He was one of the lower graded drivers um, at Ipswich, proved himself and was placed mid pack um, at Birmingham and then really did show in the final. I'm going to go with Josh King. Uh, he's done a really good job of things lately, and I, I think he, uh, well, he had a good run in the earlier races as well. I think he managed fifth, so I think he'll be one to watch in this race, especially considering he's in red grade. Sarah? Well, I am, as I always pick my horses just by the name, <clears throat> I'm going to go with Rapid Roy 36, just because I like the name. That's usually how I, I pick, well, not necessarily my horses, but if I go dog racing, that's how I like to pick my winners. <laughs> now, you you could be onto a uh, you could be onto a good one there, because uh, Rapid Roy, from what I understand, is a real-world, I believe, hot rod driver from Scotland. So you you could have uh, you could have made a, a good choice there with uh, with that one. I'm going to go for one of the Outwards. I think we could uh, could see them doing uh, something a little bit uh, a little bit special, but we'll uh, we'll just have to wait and see. The guys are just finishing off lining up now as we speak. We're gonna ride on board with a uh, a certain Mr. Damien Mulvey. And watch that's uh, Alan Christie that you can see in front of them as we get underway for heat five. See the brakes going on there for uh, turn one. Nice clean start. And this is going to be interesting seeing how quickly Mulvey can dispatch uh, Alan Christie in that Saxo. Closed in relatively well and already looking to make up positions. So these guys are fifth and fourth respectively at the moment. So you can see they're already making moves towards the, uh, towards the front. And oh! oh! Contact with Aylwood. Aylwood benefits from it, he went round the outside, but a bit disappointing there from Mulvey. He had no real choice but to sort of bash the wall and then Aylwood. Yeah, there we go. The, last, um, the only time we would generally race on this track in real life would be the National Championship each August uh, bank holiday weekend um, each year, as, as I say, as a, an Irish racer in real life. 
So watch the leading pack come through here. That's David Ryan with Scotty behind him and Potter 79, Charlie Elwood up to fourth. And they're, um, they're all still within striking distance of each other at that distance. And as you very rightly mentioned there, Sarah, um, Damien all the way at the back of the pack after that little coming together. I think we've got a few cars that we need to watch. Aylwood's making big progress and he's There's looking to... There's another spinner just there, guys. Um, he was up between turn three and four. He was. I think he may have possibly then uh, decided to disconnect rather than coming back onto the track. Johnny McCoy. Behind. There's a bit of a queue forming behind Kirkland as well in seventh, so we'll have to see what's going on there. There might, might be a few chances or overtakes going on. Alan Christie with some trouble. He's just dropped down the the, uh, the sheets, and he's now outside the top ten. And I'm guessing by the message that just popped up on screen, that was Jack Aylwood who, uh, who spun um, at the... Uh, the bottom of our screen a minute ago and has now dropped out so we're watching david ryan here who's out in first with uh, 11 laps gone nice two second nearly three second gap back to second place it's a good start yeah, apolo ryan. apologies uh, to those of you following us on youtube and facebook yes this is heat six you are right gav's forgotten to change the the heat numbers over so yes we are heat six that's just I'd because I was uh, running out of fingers to count with. That's what that was. There we go. Our multi-talented man there in Essex. Oh, Ryan with a huge lead now and doing very well to maintain it. Looking con very consistent. Charlie Aylwood in second. Around a two-second gap. It fluctuates here and there as the lap goes by. Uh, but he's got Potter for company and I think he is still looking to move up if time will allow it. Although I think laps... Are very much against him at this point. Just about to uh, to come round. They're uh, on lap 15 now to complete this one. I don't think he's going to be able to do anything from here. Although he's pulled out a fairly nice uh, gap over Potter behind him, and I can't wait to see Charlie Aylwood uh, in his fully painted car, which will uh, which will be in next week. It's uh, one of a a few changes that I know is uh, is on the books to be happening. There's going to be a few of these new guys who are going to have fully painted cars and also there's going to be a, an element of customization so you might see a few of the uh, the guys going for pimp my ride on uh, some of the cars as they can start changing out wheels and various other bits and pieces to make their cars look how they want so you boys did a great, great shout out for that one charlie elwood he was your man gav he came second and josh king who was dom's pick of the the heat was four so uh, i i bummed out in that one my rapid roy was not so rapid down in 11th so the results from uh, from heat six not heat five if uh, if i remember to change the little banner at the top heat six david ryan in the 30 car finishing in first uh, Charlie Elwood in his 46 car. That's the plain white one for this week in second. Potter 79 in third. Josh King in fourth. Scotty 78 um, in fifth. And QE got himself up to sixth place there. Carl Waller Barrett um, in seventh. Austin Newell in eighth. Tim Close, Mr. Consistent in ninth. And Aaron McGrath um, rounding out our top 10 for heat six now we'll probably have a slightly uh slightly larger gap in between uh in between this heat and then what we look to do um for final b um the main reason being is obviously all of the admin guys have to um sort out all of the points and get everything in order um so that they can uh, so they can work out who is going to be in final b and who is uh, then going to go forward to final a so we'll quickly put the results uh, up for you guys for that heat six and then uh, we have a guest as we did last week who uh, who will be talking to us and uh, so let's just quickly go through those results for you now for one last time from heat six so we said david ryan out in first charlie elwood in second Potter 79 in third and josh king in fourth scotty 78 in fifth 
QE in sixth, Carl Willow Barrett in seventh. That's, I think, an error with our system there that's put Sean Taylor in uh, eighth. I don't think that's right from uh, from what I remember from what I saw. Tim Close in ninth and uh, and Aaron McGrath in tenth. Let me have a look. I think I have that should have been Austin Newell in eighth. So I think that's uh, something that's pulled through wrong there. Yeah, now, Taylor wasn't in that one, was he? Dom, do you want to take us through and uh, and introduce to us the gentleman who is going to be joining us to, to chat with us this evening? Well, uh, obviously we had um, we had uh, Gary, uh, not sorry, uh, Gavin Murray. Uh, last week, um, famous for being a hot rod driver himself, one who will surely be uh, reaching for success when things get going again. Uh, this week we've got someone who's been in other formulas but is still into his oval racing. Unfortunately he's not had such a great night this evening but I'm hoping we can find out why. It's uh, Luke Loveland or Loveland 220 as he is on the game. How are you doing tonight Luke? Yeah, not too bad. Could have had a better night in the heat if I'm honest but yeah, enjoyable stuff. So for those uh, viewers who are out there and don't know who you are, uh, just mm -hmm. give us a brief overview of yourself and tell us where you race and what you do. Um, so I've probably raced over racing for about 10 years now. I did mini stocks and then moved through Brisk Ref 2s, Rebels, and now I race in the Oval Track Legends. Okay, so Oval Track Legends, they're a, yep. a cool class and they're quite competitive. They've got people yeah. uh, who have also done hot rods in that class. One of the ones names that springs to mind for, for me is Dan Holden. Yeah. Um, obviously, a very competitive field. And you also visit circuits, am, am I right, with the uh, with the Oval Track Legends? Uh, there's two separate classes. So there's a Oval one and then a Circuit one. So the Circuit guys, they have, to be honest, there's not much difference. They have a bit of reverse box because they have to have that on circuit. So we don't have a reverse gear. Um, and then they run on slightly different tyres, but pretty much the same. Um, but you're not allowed to run the same car in both, unfortunately. So we're kind of restricted to the ovals of this car. Okay, so I can understand. I bet you're one of the many drivers who are looking forward to getting racing again uh, when yeah. restrictions are lifted. Um, obviously, you've joined up with, uh, with these guys for the OOR. Um, mm -hmm. This is pretty exciting stuff. Are you enjoying yourself out there, even if the success ne isn't necessarily coming your way, especially this evening? Uh, yeah, I love it, to be fair. It's, it's good. It's nice to get a bit of racing excitement back when there's nothing actually going on in real life. Um, I mean, I, I, it was my first go last week. I'm pretty new to it, really. Uh, I had a couple of decent heats last week from white, and then I went to blue this week, so it's a bit more of a struggle. A um, bit of contact, and then dumped near the back, and then worked my way back through a little bit. But still, still enjoyable and still good fun. Um, and I think the, the amount, amount of people that's actually racing is testament to how much fun it is and how much everyone's enjoying it. Now, of the uh, of the real life drivers who have been racing with us, um, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, we've had we've seen a few and we've I've I've heard a lot about them buying in equipment. Um, what sort of setup are you running to uh, be competitive or try and get up the, the the order? Are you running wheel? Are you running controllers? Or are you going off good old fashioned keyboard? No, I'm running a wheel. Um, it is it's an Xbox wheel, so it's not the best in the world, um, but it does have a bit of force feedback. And then I've got like a a bit of a seat which looks a bit like a deck chair. Um, but it's called a play seat, so I use that as well. So it's quite good. It is good to be fair, uh, but it's mainly for the Xbox. So it's not it's not ideal for running this, but it it'll get you through, and it's a bit better than using a use like a controller, or especially the keypad. I was gonna say, uh, having force feedback, I think, is one of the most essential things yeah. in the hot rods. Yeah, it helps. Uh, you know, when you feel the oversteer, you need to catch it, and you need to yeah. know what's going on. Um, Obviously, you know, in these cars, it also depends on what view you're running. If you're going for the full authentic experience of cockpit mode, you need to know when things are going wrong at the back of the car so you can make the correction. And, yeah, yeah you sound as if you've got yeah, that. At I, least have to, there. I have to run the cockpit mode. I can't. Anything else, when you're looking at, like, the whole view of the car, I just, it puts me off. I think you, you can see, when you're in the car, you can see what's going on a bit more. Um, and it feels a bit more realistic, really. It feels like you're actually out there on the track. Cool. So... Um, you said you uh, joined in last week, the, uh, your first round at Birmingham. Um, head to for this week. We've got quite a few races left on the calendar, the seven rounds. Yep. Um, are you going to be looking to continue doing this, even if lockdown gets lifted? Because we've got yeah, seven more rounds next week. We're at Nuts Corner, and we've got a season running all the way until Buxton. 
Um, is this really captivated you enough to stay, or what, yeah, what are your I thoughts? think so. Um, especially as obviously at the minute we don't know when we're going to be going back racing. In real life, it could be next year at this rate. Um, so yeah, it's definitely it tides you over, keeps you keeps you a little bit sharp, and it's, it is enjoyable. Um, and to be honest, I think even if our racing restarted again, I think I'd probably carry on. Um, it's something to do and get you through a night, isn't it? And it keeps you. It is enjoyable, um, and I would advise anyone to have a go. It really is enjoyable. It's good to have a go. Luke, I've got to chime in quickly because I think mm-hmm. quite possibly yours was one of my favourite um, favourite skins that came in for the uh, the cars yeah. when you joined us last week. Where did you uh, where did you draw on uh, where did you draw on inspiration for for that livery for the car? Um, it's actually based on my legend. Um, I actually work for Mercedes in a, a dealership, um, and they're kindly enough to sponsor me in the legend. Um, so when I got all that sorted. I kind of took a bit of inspiration from the Formula One car there with the silver and black. And then the, on the car, it's got the shades of the like, Petronas green. Um, so I thought, well, I'll carry this into the into the hot rod and go for a bit of a look like that, really. I did wonder. It's uh, it's definitely a nice car. And hopefully we'll uh, we'll see that up on the uh, up on the higher steps in the uh, in the result standings Fingers a little bit. Nice. Sorry, Dom, I'll, um, I'll let you carry on. I jumped in a little bit there. I had to ask oh, that no, question. Sure. <laughs> That's a, it's a good point, Gav. And, uh, you know, they've got some very pretty cars out there. Um, you know, many different styles, many different people going for you know, retro or modern stuff. Yeah. You're certainly one of the ones that stood out. Um, you mentioned, you know, Mercedes style. Is there, anyone, is there anyone out there that you'd like to thank or give a shout out to while you're on air? Uh, well, really, if there's, any, if there's anybody, my real life sponsor, I know he's actually watching, um, who's the manager at Mercedes Benz in Solihull. Um, he's having a look tonight and having a watch because obviously they help me out. So if I can't race in real life on a track, at least I'm giving him a little bit of exposure on here with the logo still on the car. Um, that's about it, really, if I'm completely honest. Yeah, that's all, that's all I've got on the car, but no. yeah, thanks to them. Well, thank you very much for your time, Luke. Um, no problem. You know, best of luck out there. Uh, it's just a, a little bit disappointing and frustrating. It's not gone your way this evening. I was yeah, hoping for good things. Anything. But yeah, it, it is racing in the end. Yeah, um, it's racing. Fingers crossed you have a bit more luck if uh, if you're in the B final. Um, yeah. And yeah, look forward to seeing you throughout the season and hopefully we'll see you up moving up the grades as you go along. Brilliant, thank you. Best of luck, mate. Cheers, thank you very much. So, Sarah, you are our uh, you are our eyes and ears with uh, with contact to the uh, the admins. Do you have any news on who we can expect to see in final B? Yeah, I actually have the grid. I can't hear him anymore. I've I've managed to to lose him that way, but uh, he'll be bashing his <laughs> on me later on, no doubt. Uh, so our pole man for this B final is Fabian Four Fifty, who has been a winner earlier on this evening and also sat on pole earlier on. Uh, Ryan Woolsey, who I've given a shout out to many a time over this last couple of weeks in the nine forty, will line him up alongside him on the front row. Then, make this an interesting one. We have another Woolsey on the second row. We have Wayne in the 950, so I think this is going to be a really good tussle. And another Irishman joining up this front group is 51 Damien Mulvey, so it's going to be a great tussle for this first two rows. Tim 89 is behind Mr Mulvey, and our Superstock 144 man lines up behind him. 867 BDR is uh, behind them, and alongside him is Willie Hardy. Then we have Mr. Carl Waller Barrett. So he's done really well in the the points today. Um, not as well as he would hope. I like only being in the blue fi- the B final, sorry, but you know he's he's quite a way up there for this one. So uh, he's he's the next man. And then we have 921 Sean Cooney. Uh, not a name that we've we've really heard much about tonight. Um, then we have. 50, Johnny Hammond, another one, as I said earlier on, from the Woolsey family. So that would be great to get all those guys on track together. And 84, Craig Durrant. Then we have 156, Austin Newell. 61, Dom Freeman. 148, Johan, 148. And 362, Forbes, 46. And our last group is 57, Aaron McGrath. Gavin Murray, a cannonball himself, 95. I'll be disappointed to, to be way down there in, in the B final, I know. Then we have Wilkes, uh, 111. 
And last of your B final runners is 296 Michael Barber, who's just been having some banter with uh, with Kiwi online, I've just noticed. I know they're great mates in real life, so uh, that was quite fun. But uh, I've been asked not to repeat anything I see on the online uh, messenger chat. So... There's some names that you wouldn't expect to uh, to see in there normally um, in the B final, which is going to make things uh, things interesting. We've got the likes of uh, Lewis Willisey. We've got pretty much every single Wolsey that we've got in the league in there. Tim Close in the 89 car. This is going to be a different, a difficult one to to call. I would have thought for who could potentially come out and pick up that uh, 21st place spot for the a final sarah you've you've had the longest of all of us to uh, to mull over the uh, the grid and uh, and who's on there who's your pick for uh, for final b unless they caught get caught up in uh, the scramble on the first couple of laps i i'm going for a woolsey um i know i'm with my each way bets as i, I mentioned earlier on so yeah i'm going for a woolsey Top three, I'm going to say this this time, though. Dom, you've got, as I said, some big names to choose from. This is a bit of an interesting one. Uh, I wasn't expecting to see um, such big names down here. Wolsey missed out on the uh, the B final um, last week, but I think by a very small margin. So he's one who will be out for revenge. Lewis Willisey, championship leader, has to be said. You know, they will, he will be wanting to get through. Um, and yeah, Tim Close as well. And yeah, there's a few others in there for good measure that could uh, you know, completely upset things. So who knows who's going to do? Uh, who, you know, who knows who's going to get through? So um, it is going to be a, a mixed bag. I'm, I'm, do you know what? I'm not even going to put a name on this one. I think we'll just have to, uh, to sit back and, and enjoy it as the guys are... Uh, making their way to the grid to line up for this the final b and it even says final in the top corner just for you there sarah i've managed to get my uh myself together and actually change that so thank you, you. i am just literally editing to try and get this on the messenger um the messengers from this evening's uh, race so I'm um, just bear with me guys I'm gonna see if I can get this to actually appear on the messages meantime we've got cars lining up Tim close we're looking at there sat behind Fabian Bauer and uh, the other man at the front can't see the number just uh, bottom of the screen, screen that looks like that's uh, Ryan Woolsey that is it's Ryan Wolsey, my apologies there. Yeah, missed out last week by you know, not, not, by not much. He'll be out for revenge this week, as I say. Um, hopefully he can get it sorted, get it done. But, you know, those two cars behind him of, of Close and Willisey, superstar drivers, he's going to be under a lot of pressure for sure. So, on board with Ryan Wolsey. You can hear the revs climbing now as we get underway and they are going. Look at Damian Mulvey already making moves. Close, I think, might just have the lead as we go through. Although it's difficult to tell, they go close around the outside. No, it looks like it's Wolsey who's Wolsey's still keeping hold of it at the moment. Wolsey has got off to a good start, and Willisey is there in third. This is crucial for Willisey. He really does need to get that uh, B final victory and get himself into the A final. Unfortunate to see Gavin Murray retiring early on. Bad luck for him. He's just had another bad day at the office, I'm afraid. But so far, we've got Ryan Wolsey leading. We've got Tim Close taking second. And Fabian 450 in third. Oh, we've got some cars round. Not, Not sure who that was. I didn't see who that was, but the uh, but Ryan's already uh, doing pretty well for himself. He's got past Johnny McCoy in that yellow car. And so now has Lewis Willisey and Tim Close. Will is he up to second and he's going to be chasing down? Let's watch that gap. It's at a second at the moment and let's see whether or not uh, Ryan can manage to hold on to that. This is do or die for Will see, as I said earlier and he really does need to kick on the pace and try and get it to within a second and then closer still. Now, he'll be in the slipstream as he closes in but right now he's got to make up the gap fair and square. 
few close bits of racing further back barber further down sort of out, out the running sadly for him he was another one who if you look on the bottom of the screen was in the championship race uh, the top 10 now i'm not sure why fabian in that 450 car is still showing showing in joint second for some reason because that's not the case lewis willisey and then you've got tim close behind yeah, I'll I'm tell not you sure what. The timings, but he's uh, over nearly two two minutes behind, according to that. So uh, there's clearly something wrong there. But yeah, Danny fifteenth is shown on our timing screens, isn't he? That's strange. Um, either way, I think we will have to discount that for now. Uh, still not coming. Still not coming up correctly. But Ryan Walsey clearly with the lead. Willis not gaining enough time at the moment, and well, it, this could be all over his evening. Tim Close is following uh, there as well, just ready to pick up the pieces in case anything happens at the front, but at the moment this seems very clearly like a Ryan Wolsey victory. And Carl Wallabara also doing well for himself, Damian Mulvey tucked in in the, uh, in the pink car just behind. They've, uh, they've all got a fairly healthy gap between them actually when, uh, when you look at this. The next sort of closest battle that we've got is for uh, these guys right here. That's uh, Willie Hardy in the 72 car and Sean Cooney in the 921 going up the inside of him there. This being a 25 lap race, drivers are expected Ooh. to space out a little bit more. Willie Hardy sideways, that was Craig Durrant in the Mini that uh, also got caught up in that. And that looked like Johnny McCoy that spun as well. I think that was a result of some contact there. Further contact, just causing chaos out right the back of the pack hopefully it's not going to get in the way of the leaders yet i don't think they've caught up but um as i say that there is ryan Wolsey on the scene coming through and he's just... actually still got a good gap to willisey and in fact i think he's pretty much pulled away since the last time i looked oh, we were talking about willisey getting it within a second if anything he now needs to get it back to two seconds there we go we now watch lap 17 guys lap 17. all stream through Craig Durrant there still tussling with uh, Willie Hardy as we see Ryan Wolsey catching up to the back of Dom Freeman in that 61 car. Yeah, the admin's just re reminding some of the, the guys at the, the back of the pack just to watch their lines and, and let the leaders through. Willisty getting through one of the cars there but he's still got a lot of time to make up and I'm not sure if he's going to do it. Just looking here, this is one of the Freemans. This is uh, Dom Freeman. Let's see how he uh, how he reacts with uh, Ryan Wolsey coming up the inside. Moves out wide there and uh, and lets Ryan through. That's uh, that's the kind of thing that you'd uh, expect to see from some of the uh, the guys, especially who've been racing a little while and get used to seeing the, uh, the guys behind them in their mirrors. Yeah, great racing from the back markers there, exactly what the admins want to see. And obviously, what we want to see is the followers too. We don't want any, any mishaps there. Michael Barber in the 296 car. He's in 8th uh, place at the moment. And he's trying to chase down uh, Sean Cooney in the 921. You cannot miss the BDR 867 car, bright green. And let's look at this little pack just up in front. This is Damian Mulvey, and he's fighting with Carl Waller Barrett and Tim Close. This is probably the closest racing action that we've got on the track at the moment. Mulvey just looking for the inside line there. He's, he's sort of tapping around. Does he want the inside or the middle? But there's now another car joining in. The green car just behind them is going to join the party. BDR 867. As the other guys are, are tussling, he's going to and make up that. Just too late as the chequered flag is out on our 25 lap race. That looked like Johnny McCoy who was... Uh, flying through the air at the end there and well it didn't quite make it in the end we were uh, we were saying initially that we were waiting on Lewis Willisey to uh, to make up that one second gap that Ryan Wolsey uh, that Ryan Wolsey had pulled out on him I think it was near enough three seconds by the time the race actually finished so very very consistent and uh, and a, a good race from Ryan there who um, was was your shout out I think wasn't he Sarah yeah, well, I, I did uh, kind of hedge my bets a little bit, as did uh, a few of our followers on Facebook saying, go on the Irish. So uh, just like me, they kind of uh, 
took a group pack there of one nationality together. But yeah, you know, Ryan's been there or thereabouts. Um, and I know from the first week that we, we followed this um, from Birmingham, he he was definitely one that surprised me with his, his you know, fast moving pace coming through the groups. So Ryan Wolsey picking up the 21st grid spot for final a so he's going to be uh going through to final a it'll be uh, quite nice to see he should uh pick up some decent points coming through uh through the racing this week any big surprises there for for you dom or did that go pretty much how you uh how you imagined it would i think i expected willisy to creep up a little bit more ryan Rawlsey is one of the top guys as well ninth in the championship going into this meeting so he he couldn't be written off, but I just expected, you know, Willersey with his consistency and all round good pace. I just expected him to creep up that bit more and you know take the win. But it just wasn't to be this week. Willersey's not had a good day. It's been caught up in incidents, sadly. But um, yeah, he, he's he's you know he'll still be there for next week. He'll still be one of the ones to watch. He's not going to drop a grade over this. I think uh, Wolsey deservedly getting that uh, last position on the grid in the A final. Um, yeah, it, he's got exactly what he deserved and making up for last week where he missed out. Um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see how it goes. This is obviously going to have big championship ramifications, but uh, yeah, we've got to wait and see how others do. There's drivers in the uh, in the uh, um, a final, sorry, who are also going to mo- well, cause big movements in the championship, I'm sure. Daniel Erdl, 10th in the championship, he's going to move up thanks to this as well. Now, this is this is one that's uh, that's something that I wouldn't have expected to see if you'd have asked me at the beginning of this evening. Lewis Willisey there in the B final and narrowly missing out. His brother, Cameron, has made it through this evening straight to the A final in the 143 car. His first week out racing, that's, uh, that's some pretty, uh, pretty impressive uh, racing that he's done so far this evening. I think we need yeah. to really give him his credit as well. Um, you know, Daniel Erdl was last week, I think this week it is Cameron. And, uh, you know, we have to keep an eye on him, watch him move up the grades. Uh, just, you know, uh, what were you going to say, Sarah, as well? Because you know, he's been so impressive. I just want to hear everyone's opinions on him. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, d- definitely want to give a shout out to. It is so good to see that it's not the same guys always at the front. You know, this this will encourage new people to come in, new racers to come in to to join us. Um, and it, it's just so nice to see somebody else, as you say, he's maybe got a little bit of of uh, family technicalities that he's had a bit of help with. But you know, credit where credit's due. You have to actually uh, keep on the black stuff and, and keep it going round. Just also wanted to, to give a little mention. As I say, I am following what the drivers are putting to each other. And I'm, I can't give too much away. But what is nice to see is the guys are all wishing each other good luck and thanking each other for good races as they're going through the backlist throughout the night. So great sportsmanship in the, in the online overall racing messaging group. And that is nice to see, especially when uh, you look at some of the... Uh some of the ways that things have gone recently if you uh, if you've caught any of the news of what's happening uh, esports wise with some of the uh, the professional drivers so it is nice to see that that's not the kind of thing that is rolling over to us now i'm just going to go over the results before i hand back to our lady with the grid for the a final so the results for the b final ryan wolsey taking first place lewis willisey in second tim close in the 89 car rounding out the top three with carl waller barrett damian mulvey bdr867 and Sean Cooney, 921, finishing in 7th. Michael Barber in the 296 car in 8th. Aaron McGrath, another one who's uh, who's always been pretty consistently in and around the top 10 in the 57 car in 9th. And Don Freeman, always nice to see in, uh, in that, uh, as we said, NASCAR-inspired car rounding out the top 10. Sarah, take it away. So I was just having a little panic there that I hadn't got the grid, but I've had to scroll up about 300 messages to find the A-final grid. Um, And of course, we do need to remember that that Ryan Wolsey needs to go on the back here. So if I I miss him off the end, it's because he's not on this list in front of me, because this was done before the B-final. So this might be a controversial pole sitter. Joe Rollings, 593. 
Did he win? Didn't he win earlier on? He definitely got one one win that we know of. Did he get that second? We, we just don't know. Alongside him is going to be David Ryan in the 30 car. Then we have an Aylward, who uh, the family have done well this evening, 46. Charlie Aylward, 23, is his game in name. Then we have 136, Keanu no Sullivan. Next is 143, Cami, who you were just giving a shout out to, guys. Uh, and behind him is 434, Adam Cochran. Then we have our man, Mr. Nar McFerrin, in the 910. So he's been starting from back of the grid for, for the evening so far. So uh, it might be a good chance for him to get the whole shot um, off the second, uh, fourth row there. And alongside him will be Daniel Erdl, the 28 car, who uh, we've also been discussing. Had a really good weekend, a uh, really good night last Thursday. Next comes number 79, Mr. Potter. And then we've got Josh King, who was one of Dom's shout-outs earlier on in the evening in the 589. Then we have 78, Scotty 78. And then we have another Freeman, so this is going to be Dan Freeman this time round in the 606. Then our world champion, both online and on track, Mr. Derek Martin, number 20, um, of uh, both this last few days and of years gone by. Then we have 715, Ronan O'Brien, 715. I have to be really careful not to call his gaming name. That might be taking a little bit, um, <laughs> not so well. I'll spell it. R-O-N-A-N-O-B is as much as we get of his name. So I have to be careful not to read that out because we have got some younger viewers. Um, so just to finish off these last few riders, 102, Ricky Slater. Um, and then Mr. Jason Q, who's 174. Or QE74, as we know him on, on here in his racing name. Last couple of rows go 193 Jan Kulansky, then Sean Jacklin in the number 11, and your back row for tonight is 73 Donovan Borster, one of our European racers, and 122 Jordan Vovinkel. I know, speaking with, we said about some European racers, we've also got some South Africans in there as well, I believe. So, we are riding on board at the moment with the final B winner. Ryan Wolsey. So you get to see what uh, what you see if you manage to win Final B and get yourself lined up right at the back of Final A. That's a pretty impressive array of cars that uh, he's got in front of him that he's going to have to try and contend with if he wants to uh, if he wants to repeat his uh, his Final B performance and get through to uh, the top step of the podium. Any any thoughts as they're about to start on this one, Dom? Joe Rollins, I think, might be a good one to pay attention to. He's been a, a cast in as a white grade, but he's been consistent and has uh, you know, definitely been up there pace-wise as well. Uh, keep an eye on him, but you know the big names as well. Niall McFerrin looking to take that championship lead tonight. Let's see what he can do. So, you can hear the revs climbing, and we are underway for Final A as we watch as uh, Ryan Wolsey has to dive to the inside to avoid that 73 car. I say avoid. He then tagged him in the uh, in the end anyway, and that's someone that spun out on the back in front of Ryan. Oh, Wolsey did really well just to go around around the side and then not clipped. Yeah. Oh, another one. I'm not Chaos sure who that is, but that's definitely going to be worth uh, watching as the leaders come through. That's Scotty 78 that I saw uh, parked Rollins. up there. It is Ronin still leading. Cochrane is in second, but O'Sullivan is going up the inside and has got through. Charlie Aylward up into fourth place. He's definitely going to be worth watching as cars are going in all directions uh, around those back corners. And Joe Rollins is uh, taking the opportunity. He's already pulled out a one-second gap, look. Charlie Aylward has, in fact, lost places. He started third on the grid, and he's now seventh. So he has, in fact, lost places. Now McFerrin in there, tucked in there up to... Uh, up to fourth. I think Cameron 143 is the one that we need to have a look, look at now. He is now within a second and he was starting a little bit further back as well. He's made up positions. He's cut through into the top three and is now chasing down Joe Rollins for that lead position. Daniel Erdl up to sixth place as we come round to start lap eight. And that looks like Cameron Vorster that's going across the middle there. Hopefully rejoining as he is... Uh, yeah 
pulling over at the side, trying to uh, stay out of everyone's way. As we see Joe Rollins coming down the straight and into the corner now with uh, Cameron Willisey definitely closing that gap down to half a second now. So he's trying to rejoin there by the starter's gantry and he's gone again. Look, Ferran obviously following with him. Look how close they are getting to Joe Rollins. Joe I mean, Rollins this is not, looking back here, yeah. This is not something that I think he'd have wanted to see, but it was going to happen. The superstars have been so organised, so good at getting through the packs tonight. I, it was inevitable that they were going to reach him. Fingers crossed Rollins can defend, but Willacy, Cameron that is, is certainly one of the faster guys out there and hopefully... And he's going to take the opportunity. Traffic paid havoc and no, McFerrin as well is having a look say McFerrin is going to go through as well they have very much freight trained up the inside and they've taken that advantage I think Rollins put off a little bit by Vorster having to get you know, go round him up the inside and now Erdl's at the stage gone. where he's going to have to get past Vorster exactly that and McFerrin trying to challenge for the lead. Cameron Willis, he's sticking tight to the inside, but currently it, it's, oh, it's, you know, any of these three could win. It's, you know, so close. Rollins is still keeping touch as well. We can't write him off. On board with Noel McFerrin now. We've lost Scotty 78. Uh, to be fair, this is good, good gamesmanship. Couldn't reverse off, so had to leave, else I'd be in the way. So uh, good gamesmanship there, Scotty. So we didn't cause a mess for anyone else's race. And this is a leading pack of three as there was a car that was spun out just there on the right hand side all still within touching distance i think the spun car might have been ryan woolsey but that was just by going off the colors not entirely sure yeah this top three as you say gav they're all very close and you know you could throw a blanket over all three of them at points in this race it has been really close stuff and as they come into the closing stages it's still anyone's game for the win out of this top three coming round now to start lap 19 that's going to be six laps left the uh, leading two just pulling away from Joe Rollins ever so slightly but we still have to wait and see what the uh, what the traffic ahead of them does and what kind of effect it has it definitely affected things earlier on with these guys getting past Joe Rollins as someone spins in front of uh, Cameron uh, Cameron Willisey there certainly been a scary moment but I think it was just far enough ahead that it wouldn't have interrupted their pace. Noel McFerrin, McFerrin having a look around, around the outside. Oh, oh it's too stopped on the inside. Vorster again. Vorster's definitely been uh, involved in a, a few incidents which have uh, definitely changed the shape of things in this uh, A final. McFerrin using all the track there, forcing Willacy to try and make... Well, he's forcing him up the inside to ensure that he holds that position trying to go wide mid corner and then carry the speed it just doesn't seem to be working Willisy has it all covered at the moment he's just giving a little love tap isn't he just letting Cammy know he's there there's only going to be a couple of laps left it's definitely going to be really play their part here they want to be careful they don't get in the way of these two guys who are flying now Vorster's moved outside there Yannick Kalansky is the guy that they are going past at the moment he knows what he's doing so I'd imagine he'd probably stay out the way I say as he tags Cameron Willisey down the straight I think they're just stable enough that that wouldn't have done any real damage is Noel McFerrin going, going to be able to do it at the final lap not no. quite, and wow, what a gap that was. 0.11 I saw as those two crossed the line between Fantastic. Cameron Willisey and Niall McFerrin. On the, on the winner's rostrum. <laughs> you that can't was, get much closer just, than that. That was incredibly close. They, it, you know, those two had been fighting through all throughout. I think it was well deserved by Cameron Willisey. Uh, McFerrin really gave him a run for his money, but he just couldn't square up the car enough, just couldn't get through as they came down the home straight for that last time. You could literally throw a sheet over the pair of them, couldn't you? They were that close just then, over the final the final stages and the final couple of laps, and just uh, managed to hold on, did Cammy. So uh, well done for keeping an eye out for that one, Gav, that he was your man you were watching this evening. So fair play to him for a great final A. You know, as we've said before, this is his first evening in here. He's no stranger to gaming, but you've still got to take on the other guys on track when it matters, and he did just that. 
Cameron will uh, hopefully, well, there's no hopefully about it. Cameron will be out in a uh, in a liveried car next week, so we'll uh, we'll be able to spot him a little easier. But uh, yeah, fantastic driving. What a final! I apologise in advance for the fact that we didn't get to see uh, much more of some of the other drivers, but when you have the uh, the leading pair that close, you just can't take your eyes off them. Yeah, there were gains up and down the field. You can see Daniel Erdl made his way up to fourth, putting more points on the board. Derek Martin there in sixth as well. He was uh, he had quite a difficult starting position, but he's made up some point, uh, some places as well. And yeah, he will have put points on the board. Uh, Josh King and Ricky Slater there together at Aylwood, and uh, Sean Jacklin rounding up the top ten as well. So Donovan Vorster is is another one that I, I think I want to bring up for us to discuss who affected that race quite a bit but probably uh, probably not in the way that he would have wanted to if uh, he'd have had his ideal choice he seemed to get caught up in a, a few little incidents at the back there which um, which I think then actually spilled over to, to some of the leading cars I think he was definitely involved when uh, when um, Willacy and um, and Niall McFerrin got past Joe Rollins into the lead. Um, yeah. Yeah, the South African there, as, as I said, sort of mid, mid commentary, was, was definitely going to play his part if he wasn't careful. He was trying to get out of the way, to be fair to him, but um, Hendersford won't be a track that he necessarily knows from proper racing, so he would have had to have done all his research online for this one. Um, just maybe needed to, to give a little bit wider gap. But this is something these guys will, will keep on learning about as, as they practice more and, and go through more race setups. Definitely. This being, I can't remember whether or not he actually, I don't think he did come out and race last week. He was uh, he was signed up to, but I don't think he actually made it in to uh, to race. No, Vorster did. Sorry, it was Vovinkel who didn't make it in uh, in last week. But still, even so, two two meetings in, and these guys, I mean, especially when you look and uh, you, you get into the final, these guys are racing so close together. I mean, what do we say, 0 0.11 seconds between first and second place. I mean, that's that's pretty uh, pretty impressive, uh, no matter what sort of series you, you're racing. But, um, yeah, it, I, I can see he'll definitely, uh, he'll more than likely uh, improve as the... Uh, as the weeks continue, but uh, it's just unfortunate. I think that he got caught up in a in a few incidents tonight, and and it just um, it just it played a part. It's racing. It shaped uh, shaped a very enjoyable evening that we we had to uh, to watch. So, how many times in real life racing have we seen the back markers get not necessarily wanting to get involved, but you know the the faster guys come through, and sometimes you panic. Sometimes you're watching in your mirror instead of watching what's in front of you. Sometimes you're listening in your ears because, you know, just as they have in on online racing, they've, they've got the admins talking in their ears as they have in real life racing um, with their race receivers. So there's a lot of concentration. I'll take my hat off to anybody who races. I actually tried this for myself at the weekend. Um, they're, they're inviting on Sunday afternoons, they're, they're giving a couple of hours over where the non-regular runners can maybe sort of come online and and go on uh in place of their the regular guys they're, they're letting their wives and children go on and yes i i did try and go around Hedersford not very successfully last sunday um and as i mentioned my four-year-old little boy who is a, a mad fan of chris crane he he did a lot better than me i must be honest um was hoping to race against Chris. Let's see if we can get that sorted for, for this weekend. And so anybody with, with uh, partners and children shouldn't necessarily say wives because uh, all sorts of setups, as we know, in the world these days. But any partners or children wanting to have a go, um, that's something we are hoping to open up again this Sunday afternoon, you know, so that you can have a, a little play. Completely agree with that. That's, that was a, a great idea by the uh by the admin teams on on that side of things we have uh, all the guys who race and i know full well having having looked at the server sometimes in between races when the the practicing is going on that a lot of these guys are putting a huge amount of time into uh coming on and just turning laps so it's nice that you can include the uh the rest of the family you know partners children why not put your dog on the put your dog on your racing rig and let them turn a few laps in a uh, in a virtual national uh, national hot rod? So 
It's, uh... Yeah, I think my dog would be the sleeping policeman. He um he's a bit old these days, so uh, he'd run around with a good one for a couple of laps, and then he'd probably have a little sleep. I think. There we go, Dom. You you weren't overly sure last week, you know, whether or not you you fancy uh, jumping in and and having a go. So Sunday it'd be the ideal time for you to to jump on, and even even if it's just mashing keys or a or a controller, you can go and uh, and turn some laps, and you you haven't got to worry about the likes of uh, Lewis Willisey and uh, or Cameron Willisey appearing uh, on your rear bumper and uh, pushing you around the track i think to a degree I, you know I'd, I'd like to but um for now with the bare basic setup i have i don't think i'd i'd be anywhere near good enough and at heart i am such a competitive person that i wouldn't want to be <laughs> i wouldn't want to only show half, half my hand as such I, I if i was going to do something like this i would want to go all out and i would that's so yeah i, I will i will consider it but i'm not going to put anything on the table you know last week you said i, I might do it and we might have a commentary race who knows but I'm going to hold hold fire for now. We'll we'll think about it going forward. And so, we might have to organise something come the end of the season. Definitely. Let's let's have one final recap then of uh, tonight's final A results. First place, Cameron Willisey, Cami one four three naught point one one seconds behind Niall McFerrin. That was worth it in its own right if nothing else joe rollins with a uh a, a very good race he just he didn't manage to to hang on unfortunately i think that the traffic definitely played a part in that picks up the final step on the podium daniel Erdl in fourth place and adam in fifth place Derek martin in sixth so uh he will definitely be uh picking up some points this week and i think uh it's it's going to be an interesting one to see uh, how that looks at the top of the championship leaderboard. Ricky Slater in seventh. He's going to be uh, gaining some points this week as well. Uh, Josh King in eighth. Charlie Elwood in ninth place. That's not bad going at all. And I tell you what, the, uh, the Elwoods, that's definitely going to be a name that you guys are going to want to be looking out for in races coming up in the future. Sean Jacklin in the number 11 car, rounding out your top 10 for final A. So, guys, we've had... Uh, it, it's been another evening. We've we've had some technical difficulties. We've had some fantastic racing. We've had some crashing and some spinning. Sarah, if you could pick a yeah. moment from this evening, what is oh, your favourite yeah. moment? I feel like I'm repeating myself from last week, but those last few laps of that A final were outstanding. Yes, these guys are doing it on various setups of computer, but to keep those cars going round as closely as they did with top respect for each other, uh, you know, Nam Ferrin, like us, he's probably never seen Cammy before, and all of a sudden he had a, a, you know, a new guy in front of you. When you race week in, week out with the same guys, you almost get to know who you can trust and not trust to to keep a line so you know that would have been a surprise for him but top respect for these guys um so so good for that for that last result um and daniel erdl had a good race didn't he he's, he's been a bit quiet tonight but getting fourth in that final he's going to have picked him up a few good points there for the, for the championship standings definitely dom i dare you to pick something other than than the last five laps of final eight Oh, I was going to say, uh, there was one moment that sticks in the memory, but for comedic reasons, was you instantly cursing one of the one of the drivers in in one of the heats. Just as you literally mentioned them, they go backwards into the into the wall right in front of us. I couldn't remember which driver it was off the top of my head, but that was one that stuck out as a as a memory. Um, just looking at the way it's all come about though, and how it's finished, I'm no mathematician, but McFerrin will definitely have the championship lead after today. Martin there or thereabouts you know that sixth place position will earn him some vital points but it won't put any gains on mcferrin um daniel erdl was 10th he'll be moving up as well um i know that uh Woolsey was uh, in ninth but he he's not in that top 10 but he'll definitely have earned some points in that final i think it could have you know there's a, there's quite a few changes that are going to be uh, that have been there, sorry. There's quite a few changes that have uh, come through in this final, uh, and you know I'm looking forward to seeing how it's all going to play out, and you know, how this is going to form a championship chase. Um, you know, 
create a real excitement and buzz around the season. Definitely, it's going to uh, it's going to tighten things up, and we're uh, we're going to end up with some uh, some I'd imagine very close racing, which could make a uh, a huge difference into uh, into how people are going to race, even in the heats itself, and who they're going to be uh, who they're going to be scrapping with, who they're likely to get their uh, elbows out when they're uh, they're going up against. So just across the bottom of the screen now, you can see the championship standings as it was coming out of last week. So this won't take into account what we have uh, or what the drivers will have picked up from uh, from this week, but it means you can see Lewis Willisey. So him not having the ideal of uh, of events this evening, um, we're very much thinking that he is no longer going to be sat on top of the championship table. And instead, I think we can probably expect that man there, as Dom very rightly said, Niall McFerrin, to be sitting on top of the championship table as we go into round four. So, so final just thoughts. Mention, yeah, oh. I was just to say, just mention round four. That comes from Nuts Corner in Ireland next week. So, that is not a track I'm familiar with. I have never been myself. All the rounds so far, I'm familiar with the tracks. I've been there many a time. But Nuts Corner, I know nothing about. So, uh, either of you been there? Dom, I'm guessing you're the more likely out of the three of us. You say that I've not travelled to any um, any stock car venues outside this country, and it wasn't long ago that it was, I hadn't travelled anywhere outside of East Anglia. So, um, no, I, Nuts Corner, I, I'm not hugely aware of. I know that there was a shale venue there as well, but again, that's mainly because of my banger knowledge. Nuts Corner has a hot rod venue. I, you know, I'll have to see how it looks. I'll have to go into the game and possibly do a bit of scouting myself. I'm presuming it's not banked like Hednesford. It's one of the only on, on the calendar like that, but. Um, it will be interesting to see. Good to make um, use of all the Irish tracks as well as uh, as the English ones. We're going to Scotland as well, so yeah, we'll have to see. Um, I'm not hugely aware of it, I'm afraid, but I'm, I'm open to seeing what it's like. Well, that Hello. makes. I was going to say that makes three of us because I'm I'm none the wiser on it as well. So I was just going to drop out a little fact that when I was thinking about this evening earlier on, I thought I must drop in my one and only fact I know about Hednesford Racetrack and, and how it came about from the one and only Nick Thomas, who was a great man at Speedworth, uh, fortunately no longer with us, but his son, Dom Freeman, is racing. Um, so Nick told me, actually at Hednesford uh, at a race meeting uh, many years ago, how this track was created from a former reservoir it was built apparently for World War II to service water to uh, the West Midlands and Staffordshire and all of that kind of area. So, And that is how it gets its shape, basically, um, from the bowl. It, it was a reservoir. So, it was um, good racing that we had this evening. Now, just quickly before we do finish up, if any of you guys are interested in joining the uh the guys racing the national hot rods here at online oval racing you can do so look us up on facebook look up online oval racing if you're watching us on facebook you've already found us it's brilliant that's that's half the battle won uh, if you're watching on youtube make sure you head over there we've got a great community there guys who will point you in the right direction and also check out our website which is www.onlineovalracing all one word .co.uk on there is where you can sign up to be a driver and who knows maybe we could be seeing your name up in and among the Cameron Willises and Noel McFerrin in a couple of weeks time so from myself and from Sarah and from Dom it's been fantastic having you with us this evening please drop us some comments on the YouTube video on the Facebook video we love to hear your feedback and try and make things better for you guys to watch week in week out next week half past eight on Thursday nuts corner we are going to be going for round number four so from myself from Sarah and from Dom we will see you all then